Hi, and welcome to China Focus. I'm Karen Chang, filling in for Shelley Zhang. Chinese Communist Party chief Xi Jinping chose Russia as his first foreign tour destination after he became the leader of the Chinese government. Both he and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin agreed that the trip highlighted the importance of the Russian-Chinese relationship. Is this really the case, or is there more to the Russian-Chinese relationship? To talk about this with me today are China analyst Jason Ma and Chen Zhifei. Yeah. So Xi Jinping on his trip talked about how um, the Chinese-Russia relationship was one of the most strongest ties in bilateral relationship. Is this why he chose Russia first? Um, I think uh, at least uh, she considered that it can be a very, very kind of important relationship uh, between China and Russia. I think uh, primarily for two reasons. One is uh, they all see their enemy in some sense is Europe and uh, U.S. So basically because they have uh, the somewhat common enemy, so put mm -hmm. them together. Second is uh, economically wise, uh, China kind of require a lot of energy, Russia is an energy rich country. So, so in this sense, they are close, uh, in kind of uh, have this kind of reason. But uh, historically speaking, these two countries uh, are really kind of a uh, fighting with each other for hundreds of years. So, so I don't think uh, uh, at the people's level they have, are close to each other. Well, actually, that's what the BBC highlighted. Uh, mm. The Chinese state media were praising basically the trip. But uh, for ordinary Chinese, they're kind of non fussed about the whole thing. Yeah, there are definitely a differential reaction in terms of government official one and the civilian one. Um, there are, of course, a disparity in the interests. The, Ch the Chinese government are looking more towards the cooperation and uh, some kind of support they could get from a semi-authoritarian regime in Russia. However, Chinese people are more uh, focusing on the national interests, uh, their real interests. As uh, just last year, we saw the Chinese fishermen were hit by Russian gunboats. And also, uh, a lot of people thought the, the relationship, official relationship between the countries can best be described by the Chinese phrase, that is, same bad fellows having different dreams. Yeah. Right, I guess uh, basically uh, um, another indication is uh, uh, you know, there is a popular kind of tweet, uh, Twitter type of thing called Weibo in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Russian embassy in Beijing opened a Weibo officially. Mm -hmm. And uh, the response from Chinese people was very hostile. Basically, the people saying like, uh, give back all the land you take from us and uh, take away all the, 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 the communist kind of ideology oh, because kind it of was you import, imported mm -hmm. to us, imposed on us. So basically, uh, people kind of really kind of uh, have no good feeling uh, with Russian for two reasons, historical reason and also the ideology reason. Yeah, yeah really indeed, if you look at the ideology the Chinese government uh, is implementing right now, mm -hmm. is following right now, it's just nationalism. Mm -hmm. However, it's really ironic that under this nationalistic umbrella, uh, they, they talked about 100 years or century of humiliation. However, during that century, it was Russia who gave the Chinese most of the uh, damage. Brutal. Yeah, they mm -hmm. took away a territory 10 times as big as uh, current Taiwan. Yeah, oh. that's really... It depends on the yeah. calculation, could yeah. be 110 yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, but what you're hearing now from the Chinese side is mostly targeted at Japan. Whereas, you know, because Japan is that closer ally with the... And uninhabitable <laughs> islands, right? <laughs> <laughs> the tiny thing which you can Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a speck on a map. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they talk a lot about it, right? One thing that did catch people's mind about this particular trip for the Chinese is, uh, you know, they're calling her the Chinese First Lady, Peng Liyuan. Yeah. Uh, and some people have said that she's part of this soft power push for the new generation mm -hmm. of Chinese leaders. Is this the case? Um, I think because there is no substantial kind of uh, material in the trip, so this thing became a very important uh, and of course, I think the new leader, they although they cannot really kind of learn the essence of the Western culture, which is the respect of human rights, this kind of thing, democratic uh, ruling, but uh, they do can learn the appearance of the Western world. Like uh, they are trying to build a very modern image. So in this case, uh, uh, his wife is very kind of a beautiful lady uh, <laughs> because she is a singer. So, so in this way, like uh, she has a foundation to carry this role, to be a kind of yeah, attractive. A lot of Chinese bloggers, micro bloggers, actually have said that they would turn, tune in a TV program for she's visit only f to check out <laughs> his wife, to see, to see how his wife is doing, yeah. how would she be dressed? <laughs> That's right, a lot of people have been asking where she's getting her, her clothes from. Because the image that you see them coming out of this, uh, the stairs of the flight, it right. really shows the uh, head of state and the first lady as a very legitimate 
yeah. right? government. It really yeah, it, it project image, a normalcy of prosperity, of civility, uh, and all kinds of nice things associated with the Western democracy. And uh, for most of the time when they were together, I believe most of the Chinese would know more about uh, his wife. Mm. So sometimes Xi Jinping was referred to as the man who married Peng Yuan. <laughs> so he, she was so famous, and then uh, she was sort of taking advantage of that to have some kind of a charm offensive mm. that uh, differentiated uh, himself from the past Chinese leaders. That's, of course, a smart part of it. However, I, it could backfire because this visit is really about nothing. Uh, in terms of substance, there's really no such a need for such a visit. Uh, remember, uh, keep in mind that uh, almost in the meantime, President Obama made a visit to Israel. But a lot of things need, need to be fixed. The two countries, some misunderstanding, and uh, Obama wanted to take advantage of this, uh, take, avail some help itself of this opportunity to send a message to our world that Israel remains to be the most trusted ally in that mm. area. However, if you look at Russia and China, Really, it's just like a show, like a wow, it's orchestrated uh, for their own self-interest. But they do sign something, like uh, at least uh, they agree to have this plan for Russia to provide uh, natural gas mm, to That China. is something China wants from Russia, the Russia, huge Russia. energy resources. Yeah, but uh, of course, uh, kind of at expense, like uh, the Russian agreed to give them um, uh, kind of uh, export more oil to mm -hmm. China only under the condition China give uh, uh, Russian two billion kind of uh, oh. loans mm. at this immediately. So, so I guess uh, basically it kind of in this part they do kind of uh, have some kind of in business interest. There. Well, yeah. two points. First of all, I was somehow under an impression that this kind of cooperation in the field of oil and gas had been talked about for too long without any concrete results. Mm. I mean, the I natural gas bill hasn't been signed yet. Still. Exactly, yeah. and I think I heard similar talks about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and still they were just talking. I was wondering what's the real reaction. Okay. Secondly, it's hardly a very friendly gesture on the part of Russian. Because if you ask, look at yeah. the 80s, mm. 70s, they have the so-called, I forgot the English name, they do have a, a, like economic cooperation block for all the socialist countries. Uh, Russia provides a lot of subsidized oil to Cuba, to North Korea. That's why those economies collapsed when Russia was, uh, Soviet Russia was gone. Mm. And so the way Russia treated China as if China were its potential rival, uh, that's really... Uh, you know, that, that's bargain. always the mindset about Russia towards China, because China is such a big country and their kind of their uh, kind of a kind of a central gravity is in Europe mm -hmm. and they have this huge backyard in the east they and have Asia. To look after yeah. It, yeah. And, uh, but uh, China is uh, pose a very big threat to their backyard so so they treat China always as a rivalry instead but it's only because of uh, they have this common kind of enemy of US and uh, Europe so they kind of uh, hug together but indeed they are really think about different things Th that's true when uh, Putin uh, assumed uh, the pre office of presidency the third time last May he also made a point of visiting China right afterwards. So the two countries seeing themselves as uh, forging a united front oh, against the Western influence and the United Nations uh, vote, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of issues, including Syria and uh, Iran. And their common enemy, you, talk, you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. I don't think they would be so brazen to talk about ideological differences. Mm -hmm. They knew uh, they could not afford to do that because the economy, especially China's, uh, a lot of part of it, in large measure, would rely on Western economy. It's all about uh, some kind of geological kind of um, a theory. Now the common enemy is the so-called unipolar world. When, when you talk about unipolar, the one polar, of course, United States. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the two party, two countries are united against that unipolar world. They want to be multipolar world. And multipolar means that Russia could be one, or Russia or China could be one together. Well, that, that's what they hope, but uh, I think the, the the point is right now they kind of they try to make a uh, she try to make it. He talk about this uh, shoe theory over there, <laughs> and uh, he mentioned like uh, oh everyone should uh, know what kind of shoe fits them the best. Mm -hmm. and, In terms uh, of the uh, government system. Government system. They use oh, this oh, as a way to like uh, you right shouldn't like, interfere with our internal affair. We choose this system and because it fit us the best. But uh, the reactions, the Western world didn't react, but the people in China react uh, like crazy. Like people think, okay, oh, okay, I mean, is there kind of anything, kind of the, 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 my, my food, can, uh, can, the food can speak anything? Mm -hmm. Oh, if oh, I don't like this show, can I return this show? Basically, people in China, they consider his statement as a joke because uh, Chinese, he, he's, 
claim Chinese people choose the current Chinese system, mm. but uh, no, indeed, that's not. Yeah. Chinese people don't like the current system, but they can't not do yeah, anything about Jason it. When Jason first related this story to me, I think it uh, was the setting where she gave a speech at, a China, at Russia's uh, Moscow State uh, Institute of International Relations, a very important value, a very important speech with all VIPs gathered together. I think my first impression reaction was Russian shoes have been changing. Russian people have been given diff shoes of different sizes. Putin gave them shoes of one size, Yeltsin gave them one sh shoes of one size, and there were hundreds of thousands of people protesting, demonstrating on the street when Putin tried to be the president the third time. They, they mimicked uh, uh, massive building gestures, and th these people were not put in jail. That's progress. However, look at today's China. Were there any difference from China 20 years ago? Hardly. It's politically on the reforms. On the surface, they may have some kind of, they're not kind of as brutal as 30 years ago, but still, I mean, you, they, you don't have free price. They don't have the free right to assemble. They still put a lot of uh, journalists in jail. They have this uh, internet censorship, which is number one in the world. So so basically, it, kind of Chinese people didn't really try any other shows. I mean, that's the show, <laughs> only show they, the Communist Party put on their foot. I mean, yeah. like for the Russia side, the, the first change of show, I guess, came when the USSR collapsed, and Xi Jinping actually back in December warned against this happening to the Communist Party, and he delivered this um, warning to them. Oh, that's so good. So right. you know they're not going to change their shoes anytime soon, like the Russians yeah, have. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so in in China, leaders come and go, but the shoe remains to be the same size. <laughs> now, she, uh, when Mao uh, took uh, power, and his first visit was also to Russia, so Xi Jinping seems to follow the footprint of Mao, and that means in the past 60, uh, 60 plus years. The shoe size is the same. <laughs> but, but I guess this is really an interesting point. I mean, she should uh, kind of, if she are friendly people, he should say like, oh, inside China, we use you as back example. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. It's yeah. kind of ironic. One, one of the things that she did uh, in Russia was that he was the first Chinese president to visit the Russian defense ministry. Mm. Does this now signal that, you know, the Russians and the Chinese are kind of planning this strength and military cooperation well, they to have been doing counter that. the U.S.? They have been doing that already. In the last 11 years, I happen to know they have had joint military exercises together every year. Mm. There was even one time when Russia held military exercises in, in China territory in Weifang area. They're sending a pair of troops. They work together, and uh, in the last 20 years, uh, China had always topped the list of the Russia's, uh, in terms of buying Russia's weaponry. Uh, however, Russia was very wary of that because China was very good copycat, you know, and then they, uh, they have refused to sell uh, most sophisticated arms to China right now. So that's why another evidence they are really this, bad fellows having trust, different yeah. teams. There was a lot of mistrust, uh, a grudge actually between them, uh, not, uh, not to mention at the civilian level. Mm -hmm. However, they are trying to have these walls together to post the image of friends, and it's all show to the, the, to, to for the Western, Western world. To Western so, so world. before yeah. we wrap up, so is there does the U.S. have something to worry about then with this Russian-Chinese relationship? No, I didn't think this uh, visit have changed anything. It, it's, it was uh, uh, the, a show between these two countries to the world, and uh, it will be limited as a show. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, so that's the reason his wife play a very important role. Mm -hmm. She is in show. And the, become the, 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 first lady, yeah. <laughs> right. the first lady became the focus of all the talk on, on the key subject of this visit. That's really a joke. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much for your analysis today. We're out of time. And thank you for watching. For more on China-related topics, visit our website at ntd.tv. Thanks for watching.